Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Samarth and I am back with another video on Ionic. In this fun video, we will be building an Ionic app that will allow the user to choose a file from their mobile phone and upload that file to Firebase Cloud Storage. So the user will have to browse the file on their phone and once they select the file, the file will be uploaded to Firebase Cloud Storage. In this video, we will be installing a few modules. The first module will be the file chooser Ionic native module along with the Cordova plugin which will help us to build the functionality to allow the user to choose a file. Next, we will be using the file module and the Cordova plugin called Cordova plugin file which will allow us to read that particular file so that we can upload it to Firebase Cloud Storage. Lastly, we will have to configure Firebase in our application and I have already done that in a lot of videos before so I'll be doing that real quick and then we will be building the rest of the functionality in the video. So as you can see that I am creating a new Ionic app here. The name of the Ionic application is Ionic File Upload. It is a blank Ionic application that I've just created and now I'm going to open this project in Visual Studio Code. So here I have the project opened inside Visual Studio Code. First things first, I'll install the Firebase module and configure Firebase in my app.module.ts. I'm not going to explain this because I have already done that in a lot of other videos that you can check out on my channel. Okay, so this is the config that I have got from the Firebase console. You can get this from your Firebase console and yours will be different. It contains quite a few credentials that you need to make everything work. Finally, you call the initialize app function and pass in this config. So that is it. That's all you need to do to configure Firebase. We will not be installing any third party modules like Angular Fire 2 or anything like that. We'll be using just the Firebase node module. And now we can proceed with the installation of our plugins. So the first plugin that we need to install is file chooser. So I'll install the Cordova plugin and the node module. Now we will move on to the file plugin. Now that everything is installed, I'll have to import it in my app.module.ts file. So right after my status bar import, I'll just paste in two more imports. The first import is the file chooser from ionic native slash file chooser and the second one is file from ionic native slash file. And I'll have to pass both these providers into my providers array right here at the bottom. We are done with our app.module.ts file for this video so you can just go ahead and close it and now we'll be doing the rest of the work in our pages. So we already have a page created for us. It is the home page. So I'll just open my home.html and I'll create a button to upload the files. Okay, so this is the button and this button is a block button and this button will call the function choose whenever we'll tap or click on it. Okay, and this choose function is the one that we'll be creating next in our home.ts file. So let's go to home.ts and create this function right away. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do in this function is use the file chooser plugin. So I'll import that up top and while we are at it, we'll also import the file plugin. We'll also pass both these plugins through our constructor to initialize them. Now we have got the instance variables file chooser and file with lowercase alphabets that we can use in our choose function. So the first thing we'll do is use the file chooser plugin using the file chooser object and I'll just call the open function and on this function you can call the then function and the then function takes in a callback which will be executed if everything goes well. And if everything goes well, you'll get a URL of the file that the user selected on their phone. So let's just call this URI, okay? And we will alert this URI for now, okay? Just so we know that we are doing everything right. So if we run our app right now, our app will allow the user to choose a file on their phone 
and once the user chooses a file on their phone, we will get the URI to that file on their phone and the URI will be displayed to us in an alert. Now the next step is that we want to read that file either as a base64 string or an array buffer. Now we can use the base64 string method but for larger files like images, it is very inefficient and is very processor intensive. So I do not recommend to use it if you are expecting the user to choose larger files. If the file size is below 1 megabyte, then I suggest that you can go with the base64 string method. Otherwise, you should use the array buffer function. And that is what we are going to do. So now we will use the file plugin to get a file system URL for this URI. And then we will again use the file plugin to read that file from that URL as an array buffer. Okay, so let's just go ahead and use the file plugin. So I'll just type in this dot file dot resolve local file system URL. And this function takes in the URI that we have got from the file chooser plugin. And once you pass in this URI, you will get a new URL, which is the resolved file system URL that you can actually use to read the file from the file system. So let's call this new URL. Okay, and let's just go ahead and alert this new URL as well. Basically, this new URL is not just a string, it is a JSON object and it contains some properties and functions. So let's just go ahead and use json.stringify on this new URL and alert it to the user. So now we'll get to know everything which is inside the new URL object since it will be alerted to us. Now, I know that inside new URL there is a field called native URL that we need and it contains the complete URL to the file. It also contains a field called name which contains the file name. So the next thing that we want to do is use the read as array buffer function which takes in two parameters as you can see that this function takes in the path as the first parameter and this is not the path to the file. This is the path to the directory in which our file is. So we do not have that path as of now. Let's just go ahead and call it directory path for now or dir path and the second parameter is the file name which we have inside new url dot name. So now that we have provided both these parameters, the read as array buffer function will work and will provide us the file contents as array buffer. But we do not have dir path as a variable as of now. So we'll create that. So we'll extract the path up to the file from new URL variable and it is inside native URL. But we need to remove the file name from this path. Then only it will become a valid directory path. So what we'll do, we will split it we will remove the last part that we get after splitting and then we'll join it again. That way we will have just the path to the directory in which the file is. So what I'm doing here is that I have created another variable called directory path segments and I have split directory path with a slash. So the string will be broken down in a lot of pieces. Wherever it finds a slash, it will break the string and will store all the segments as an array inside directory path segments variable. Next, I have used the pop function to remove the last element which will remove the file name and then I'm joining it again using slash. So basically, if your path looks something like this and if you remove the file name, then whatever you are left with is actually the path to the directory and that is what we are doing. So now that we have the path to the directory inside the directory path variable, we are passing it inside a read as array buffer function and we will run the promise on this function. We will get a string. Let's call the parameter that we get inside the promise as buffer. We will pass it into another function that will be responsible for uploading this array buffer, which is the content of the file to Firebase. So I'll just create another function which will be called as upload. And inside this, I'll pass in this buffer and the file name. So the file name is inside new URL dot name. So the last thing that we need to do is create this function upload. So I'll just do that real quick. This function takes in the buffer as a parameter and the name. Okay. So now all we are left to do is use the Firebase functions to upload this buffer content, which is actually the content of a file to Firebase. So the first thing we'll need to do inside this function is create a new blob from this buffer and then we will upload that blob 
to Firebase. Blob is a special data structure which is used to transfer files from one place to another. So let's just create a variable called blob and this will be of the type blob okay and inside this constructor we can pass in two objects the first object is going to be the buffer itself but you cannot pass in buffer like that if you do that you'll get an error the second parameter is going to be the type so this specifies the file type that you are expecting the user to browse so for now let's just keep the file type to be image slash jpeg so we are expecting our user only to browse jpeg images now this will give you an error if you try to use it so instead of passing in buffer like that you will have to pass it as an array here okay that's what the blob expects so once you have got the blob we will now initialize the storage module of firebase and now we will use this storage object to upload the file so i'll just type in storage.ref and here i'll have to pass in the path where i want to store the files so i want to create a directory called images on firebase cloud storage and at the end of it i'll just concatenate the name of the file dot put and inside here i'll just pass in the blob we will execute a promise and here i'll just alert done to the user and if something goes wrong we will just alert the error to the user as a stringified json object okay we are getting this error because we have not imported firebase up top so i'll just do that real quick okay and the error goes away another thing that we want to take care of before we actually run it is that this function right here is an asynchronous function so what i want to do is that i want my choose function to wait for the upload function to complete okay so i'll just type in await here and to type in await here i need to modify this function as an asynchronous function and i'll have to make upload an asynchronous function as well all the errors go away now our choose function will actually wait for the upload function to return and once the file is uploaded then you can actually display a message here that file upload process has completed since we are displaying an alert right here we do not need to do that let's try and run this on my device so i'll just type in ionic cordova run android this command will add the android platform first and will then deploy the app on my phone which is connected to this computer right now via the usb cable so let's hit enter and wait for this process to complete so here is the application as it looks like on my phone you can see that i have the upload button and i'm going to tap on it as i tap on the button i get a list of all the apps that can help me choose a file on my phone so i'll just go ahead and select gallery and choose a picture from my gallery and as soon as i select a picture you can see that i get an alert that displays me the url to the image this is the functionality that we implemented via the file chooser plugin now i'll tap on okay and we get another alert and this is what we have inside the new url object this is what we get when we use the file plugin and this contains a lot of information about the file the two things that we actually used in our code from this object is the native url and the name okay so i'll just go ahead and tap on okay now and you can see that i immediately get an error and this is the error from firebase so everything went well the file was converted into array buffer and and our application was trying to upload the file to firebase just when it ran into this error and what this error says is that permission is denied our application cannot upload because only authenticated users are allowed to do that so let's go back and remove this restriction and see how our application works without authentication so i'll just tap on okay for now i'll come back to my firebase console i'll select my project on firebase console go to storage select rules and in here you have to remove this part right here after the write statement comment this out for now publish all these changes and now i have modified the rules so that any user without authentication can write to my firebase storage so now let's go back to our application and try again so i'll just hit again on the upload button select gallery select an image 
okay okay and i think it is uploading the file to firebase cloud storage right now and it's done so we get an alert that says done let's head back to firebase and see if we have actually uploaded our file or not go back to my firebase console click on storage inside the files tab i should get a folder called images we have the folder here and inside this folder i should have the file that i selected in my gallery so here we have the file let's see if the file shows up so this is the image that i actually uploaded it shows up just perfect in the preview so this is how you can use firebase cloud storage to upload files in this video we uploaded just an image but you can use pretty much the same process for any file on your phone so that was it for this video i hope you enjoyed it let me know if you face any problems in the comments and also let me know of some topics that you want me to make videos on thanks for watching